So in this talk, I will focus on the polarized emission from protoplanetary disk structures and how to possibly use polarization observations of spectral line emission to trace magnetic field structures in polar protoplanetary disks. And I want to motivate this by showing some dust polarization observations yeah, from Stevens, uh, 2017, that neatly show that dust polarization in protoplanetary disk structures uh, does not uh, faithfully trace the magnetic field, but instead are uh, determined by alternative alignment me mechanisms and also measuring magnetic field strength directly through Zeeman splitting observations has uh, been difficult, at least for the face on disk of TW Hydra. So other probes for the magnetic field, uh, other probes of the magnetic field morphology uh, have to be used uh, in order to trace the magnetic field structure of protoplanetary disks. And in this talk, I will discuss one observational avenue that might accomplish this, namely through the observation of linearly polarized molecular lines. And molecular lines, they can get polarized through the goldrecht gilavs effect, the GK effect, and their polarization angles and traced magnetic field direction. And recently we've developed a three-dimensional radiator transfer code that can simulate the emergence of polarization in molecular lines, uh, which we call portal. Um, Yes, but first I want to shortly focus on some of the molecular physics behind the polarization of molecular lines. And here we're looking at a schematic of the chemical structure of a protoplanetary disk. And we focus here on a region in blue uh, where from emission is to be expected. And looking at the excitation of molecular levels uh, for these regions, collisions, absorption, stimulated emission events, and spontaneous emission, emission events, are, are relevant. And the collisional rates, they are a function of the temperature and the density, uh, and they are isotropic. However, the radiative rates, if we're talking about absorption and stimulated emission, they are also dependent on a radiation field, and which uh, and the radiation field um, in a highly anisotropic structure like a protoplanetary disk is also anisotropic. And the radiative interactions also have an anisotropic part to um, to, to, their, to their rates. Um, so the isotropic parts of the radiative interaction here, they are just a function of the, of, of the total intensity averaged over overall angles, while the aligning part of the radiative interactions, they are dependent on the radiation field weighed over the second order polynomial um, overall, the, the angles. And then if the aligning, uh, if, the, if the radiative interactions are significantly anisotropic, and if furthermore the excitation of the molecular lines has significant radiative interactions, or in other words, if the molecule is non-LTE excited, then molecular states will align with respect to the magnetic field direction, and polarization will manifest in the line emission. And the polarization emergent from some such lines traces the magnetic field direction for uh, magnetic field stronger than in the order of some uh, micro gauss. And now I will show some estimates we made with portal to quantify the emergent polarization fraction and polarization maps of some molecular lines. So the simulations that I'm going to show are performed on the tapered disk model, 10 Jupiter masses, and the molecular abundance profiles, uh, profiles we have chosen to be the constant throughout the disk. And I want to, in my story, distinct between uh, two molecules that show rather different polarization behavior, namely CO uh, with a weak dipole moment and therefore rather weak radiative interactions and HCN, which has a rather strong dipole moment uh, and therefore rather strong radiative interactions. And CO lines, they are thermalized at much lower densities than our HCN lines. And therefore, from the little discussion uh, we just had, uh, HCN lines, they should be more susceptible to polarization. And in this, this is already confirmed in these figures where, um, where we showed the relative alignment of the J equals three state of both the CO and HCN. Um, and this relative alignment parameter, uh, sigma, is a measure of the propensity of a molecule to be aligned along or perpendicular to uh, the magnetic field direction. This magnetic field direction, these figures, is a toroidal uh, magnetic field. So from this comparison, you can already see that a molecule such as CO is aligned in the periphery of the disk, in the outer parts of the disk, uh, much farther out than is HCM. Uh, so, and this is in close to the midplane. 
uh, the densities are too high and all of the levels are LT excited. Um, but higher up in the disk, uh, densities get low enough so that the alignment can manifest. But how does this alignment translate to polarization Im images? So here I give the azimuthly uh, average line emission profiles of some uh, lines for a phase on uh, disk. And we plot the estimated uh, polarization fractions for a radial, a toroidal, and a poloidal uh, magnetic field. The straight lines, they are with respect to the left axis, which is the total brightness temperature. And the dotted lines, they are with respect to the right axis, which is the polarization fraction. And we can already see that for a poloidal uh, magnetic field configuration, the uh, uh, predicted polarization fractions are very low, and this is because the inclination is, or the, the poloidal magnetic field is along the line of sight. Uh, but this is not the case for the radial and the toroidal um, uh, configurations. And if we compare again uh, CO and HCN, we can already see, as can be expected, that CO emission extends much farther out. Uh, but that the polarization fraction of CO only becomes significant when the brightness temperature drops below 5 Kelvin. And partially, this is an effect of the radiation and isotropy being increased for these uh, high brightness temperature gradients um, with respect to the uh, optical depth, that is. Uh, another part is that uh, at lower densities, farther out in the disk, um, uh, alignment can manifest more easily. But if we look at HCN here in blue, then uh, we can see that, a, that the HCN lines are significantly polarized throughout the disk, uh, about half a percent. Uh, and this is a testament to HCN's relatively strong radiative interactions, making it more susceptible to alignment and thus more likely to have its emission significantly polarized. Uh, but turning now to CO's isotopologues, we note that uh, much, uh, much less abundant 13CO and C18O uh, that uh, compared to uh, regular CO, that they have consistently lower polarization estimates. And this is because their emission comes from deeper down in the disk where densities are higher and alignment is quenched by collisions. So if you now move on to maps, so now we move on to uh, uh, integrated intensity maps of an edge-on oriented disk at 90 degrees. So on the left-hand side, we plot the integrated brightness, uh, brightness temperature maps, while on the right-hand side, we plot the polarization fraction at the brightness temperature maxima. And you can already note here the different scales that we used for HCN and CO, the CO emission is way more extended. Um, uh, but again, uh, HCN here shows uh, more significant polarization uh, in the inner region of the disk, while CO is only polarized in the outer regions of the disk. So now I show how the polarization factors look like when we observe the protoplanetary disk for a specific um, magnetic field configuration. So on the left side, hand side, we have a toroidal, and on the right hand side, we have a poloidal magnetic field. And we're gonna look at two videos that will go through a range of, of inclinations. Um, uh, polarization fractions above 1%, um, I, I've drawn as, as, as if they are 1%. This is for better visibility of the polarization factors, lower polarization fractions. Um, and here you can see the inclination of the velocity slice. And at the phase on configuration, the toroidal uh, polarization, the polarization vectors due to a toroidal magnetic field, they are oriented in a radial fashion and of a poloidal um, magnetic field, they're oriented in a uh, toroidal fashion. So they are perpendicular to the magnetic field uh, direction. Um, for all inclinations, you can actually note that the poloidal and toroidal magnetic fields that they give rise to polarization factors that are perpendicular with respect to each other. So we're now going to look at the video of all the inclination angles and uh, all velocity slices for 45 degrees inclination. So these videos can be downloaded from these links if you want to see them frame, frame by frame. 
and we're back again. So we've seen in the polarization estimate that for estimates that for uh, the molecular traces, the strongest polarization was found for lines excited in the outer region of the, of the sort of protoplanetary disk in the atmosphere. And the, the inner parts, they have to often too high densities so that collisions quench uh, the polarization. And But in a recent paper, uh, we proposed that molecular ions can get aligned through oriented collisions when a velocity slip exists between the ions in the neutral. Uh, and this is when Avapolar, is, uh, avapolar diffusion is present because when avapolar diffusion is present there is a drift between the ions and the neutrals so that collisions between uh, molecular ions and uh, let's say h2 have a preferred direction uh, and this in turn aligns uh, the molecular ions and molecular ions that are aligned they subsequently emit polarized uh, emission with uh, polarization factors that are perpendicular to the magnetic field direction. And in this figure, uh, we plot the estimates of an HCO4 to 3 uh, transition where uh, the polarization fraction estimates they are with respect to the right hand axis. So these different lines, they refer to um, different anisotropy parameters of the collisional cross sections. And we estimate that um, the anisotropy parameter is same as this uh, black straight line. Uh, and the x-axis here is the drift velocity normalized to the thermal, thermal velocity. So and according to these simple models, HCO plus lines are significantly polarized already at very mild drift velocities and could be used as traces of ambipolar diffusion in the magnetic field structure. So in conclusion, we present three-dimensional uh, polarized radiative transfer uh, simulations of molecular spectral lines in protoplanetary disks. And these are the first estimates of polar polarized emission in line emission, uh, polarized emission in line emission emerging from protoplanetary disks. Uh, we discussed opportunities to trace non-ideal MHD effects using uh, the collisional, uh, collisionally polarized uh, molecular ions. Um, and we used our new three-dimensional uh, polar polarized radiative transfer code, which is adapted to line emission. This we call portal. Uh, the source code can be found on this GitHub page. Uh, and if you want to read about portal, please read this uh, article. Or if you want to read about uh, collisional polarization, you can read this letter. And the work presented in this presentation is being prepared for submission. Thank you for your attention.